The exponentiation operator in JavaScript raises one number to the power of another. This has the same behavior as math.pow, but it's a normal binary expression, and it can be a little bit more natural to write. It also works with big integers. Let's take a look at this operator in action. So to write the exponentiation operator, it works just like a normal binary operator, and it's typed using two star symbols. So if we wanted to raise two to the power of four, for example, we'd say two, and then the exponentiation operator, which again is two star symbols, and then the power we're going to raise things to, which in this case is four. When I evaluate this, you can see that we get back 16. Now this is the same result as if we were calling math.pow. So if we said math.pow and then said two and four here, you'll notice that we get back 16 as well. The exponentiation operator is just a little bit shorter in this case, and it's also more um, consistent with other binary operators where math.pow can feel a little bit foreign when you're going and writing math equations. So that is the basic behavior of the exponentiation operator, but there are also a few things that you need to be aware of when working with it. The first is the type of numbers that you can pass in. So up here, you can see that we're passing in positive whole numbers. We could pass in uh, fractional numbers as well. So we could say 0.2 here if we wanted to, and you can see that the result we're getting back down here. We could pass in 0.4, so a fractional number for the power that we're going to raise things to. All of that is supported. But let's see what happens when you try to pass in a negative number as the base here. So if we say negative 2 to the power of 4. When I try to evaluate this, we actually get back a, an error. And the problem here is not that JavaScript can't raise negative numbers to a power. We can actually go back here and say math.pow and pass in negative 2 and 4. And you can see that the result is 16. Instead, this is considered by JavaScript to be a syntax error because it is potentially ambiguous, and JavaScript is trying to prevent common uh, programming errors where you're writing an equation that does something different than what you expect. Now, to understand this ambiguity, we actually need to look at other languages and how they would in interpret the exponentiation operator. In some languages, when you write something like negative 2 to the power of 4, it is going to interpret it as if you're saying negative 2 and then raising that to the power of 4. We can make this interpretation explicit by using parentheses. However, other programming languages interpret this instead as 2 to the power of 4, and then you're going and making that a negative number with the unary uh, negative operator here. Now, different languages are interpreting this in different ways. And the JavaScript spec authors saw this, and they decided that rather than choosing one interpretation or the other, they're just going to make this in a syntax error so that you have to use parentheses to uh, specify which behavior you want. So if we want to raise negative 2 to the power of 4, we can do that just by adding some parentheses. So again, I'm going to write negative 2 to the power of 4, and then I'm going to wrap the base here in parentheses. And now it is going to correctly be interpreted as negative 2 to the power of 4. If I wanted it to be interpreted the other way, of course, I could still do that. So I could say negative and then the parentheses for 2 to the power of 4. And now I can go and get the different interpretation. And you can see that these two interpretations actually have different results. One is positive and one is negative. This limitation only applies if you're writing a number literal that is negative. So if I have a negative number that is uh, stored in a variable, you do not need to worry about this limitation. So if I said const a equals negative 2, for example, I could then say, go back here, and I could say a to the power of 4. And this is going to be interpreted as the value of a, which in this case is negative 2 to the power of 4. There's no ambiguity. It is only when you're working with a number literal and a, uh, you want to have a negative number literal that you need to go and add those explicit parentheses. Another thing to know about the exponentiation operator is that it binds fairly tightly and is going to be evaluated before many other parts of the equation are. So let's say we had an equation that looked like this. So we'll say 2 to the power of 4 and then plus 1. Now, the result in this case is 17. And that is because the equation is being evaluated like this. So we're saying 2 to the power of 4, which is going to be evaluated first. And then we're adding 1 afterwards. If we instead wanted to say 2 to the power of 4 plus 1, we'd have to add explicit parentheses over here to go and force that interpretation. If we don't have the, uh, the parentheses, the equation is instead going to be interpreted like this because the exponentiation binds tightly and is going to be evaluated before other parts of the equation. The exponentiation operator is also right associative, which means that the equations on the right-hand side are going to be evaluated before the equations on the left-hand side. So if we said something like 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 2, you'll see that we get back a pretty large number here. And the way that this equation is being evaluated is that it is going to group the equations on the right uh, together and evaluate those first. So if we add parentheses to make this explicit, this equation above without the parentheses is really being interpreted as this. So we're really saying, 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 2. So it's really like we're saying 2 to the power of 16, which results in this large number. If we were instead wanting this to be interpreted as 
2 to the power of 4, and then taking that result, which in this case is going to be 16 to the power of 2, we have to add explicit parentheses over here on the left-hand side. Without the parentheses, these uh, equations on the right-hand side with exponentiation are going to be evaluated first. And you can see that when we go and add the explicit parentheses on the left-hand side, we actually end up with a much different result than when we did not have the parentheses and things on the uh, right-hand side were being evaluated. One other neat property of the exponentiation operator is that it works correctly with big integers. This is something that MathPow does not support. So using the exponentiation operator is the only way to work with big integer values. For example, if we did something like 100 to the power of 1000, using normal integer values here, so normal numbers, you can see that the result is actually infinity. So we're creating a number that is so large using JavaScript's normal number system that it is um, saying that this value is effectively infinity. We can get around this limitation by making both the base and the exponent uh, big integer values, which we can do just by adding a n suffix on each of these. So we'll say 100n, which is creating a big integer value, and then 1000n. And when we evaluate this, we can see that we correctly get back a big integer value with a whole lot of zeros in it. If we try passing these big integer values to math.pow, so we'll say math.pow, and then 100n, 1000n, we'll see that math.pow is actually going to throw an exception because it is trying to convert a big integer value into a normal number, which is not supported. Using the exponentiation operator is the only way to um, exponentiate big integer values. So that's the exponentiation operator in JavaScript. For basic uses, it can be a great way to clean up some of your equations. And for more advanced uses, you can also use it for working with big integer values.